to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ the apostle john said i have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth 3rd John verse 4. We welcome you today to our study of the books of 2nd and 3rd John, all about walking in the truth. So glad you've joined us. We want to encourage you, if you don't have it with you, to get your Bible and have it ready to 2nd and 3rd John as we're going to be studying from the Word of God today. We're so glad that you joined us and we want you to know that today's lessons are being brought to you by individual members and congregations of the Churches of Christ. The Church of Christ in your area, they'd love for you to stop by and visit their assembly, whether it be on Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday night for Bible study. You would be an honored guest at any of their services and they would love to sit down and get to know you better. You've got a Bible question. You want to know maybe a question, answer the question, what must I do to be saved? Or how should Christians worship today? Or what do we know about the Lord's church? You'll find people there who'd be happy to sit down and open up and search the scriptures together with you. Friend, we'd also love to help you here at the Gospel of Christ. Visit our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can find all our Bible study materials available free of charge. We have videos, audio lessons, transcripts, study questions, a host of written material. All of it's available free of charge, and you can access it from our website, thegospelofchrist.com. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson that's available for you in a digital download, or if you need a hard copy on a DVD or CD, we'd be glad to mail that to you as well. Just visit our website, fill out a media request form, and we'll put that in the mail to you free of charge. Today we're thinking about the great books of 2nd and 3rd John. Remember in 1st John, if you follow with us in those lessons, in 1st John, John was talking all about walking in the light because God is light and walking in the love because God is love. 2nd and 3rd John kind of complements that idea by teaching us to walk in truth because God Himself is the essence of truth. Did you know that the word truth occurs in these two little books 11 times in 26 verses. That puts a heavy emphasis on the truth in both of these books. And you see, the truth is so valuable and important. Psalm 119, verse 172, the entirety of God's Word is truth. Your Word is truth, the psalmist would say. John 17, verse 17, Jesus said, Sanctify them by your truth, your word is truth. And so when we talk about the truth, we're talking about God's word. When we talk about the truth, we're talking about Jesus Christ. The truth is in Jesus. Ephesians 4, verse number 21. We're talking about salvation and truth found in the message of Jesus. You shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. John 8, verse 32. And of course, that question Pilate asked, what is truth? had already been answered by the Lord. It is the Word of God, it is God Himself, and it is the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, while 2nd and 3rd John both deal with walking in the truth, they both put a little different aspect to it. 2nd John talks about walking in the truth when external, outside problems arise. 3rd John is walking about truth sometimes when internal problems arise. That is problems from within and problems from without. And so some of the messages you'll find in 2nd John, 3rd John are very close in their nature. Now, what do we learn from these books? First, we learn to walk in truth, you've got to love the truth. Look in 2 John verse 1. Notice what the Scripture reads. John says, To the elect lady and her children, whom I love in truth, and not only I, 
but also all those who have known the truth. There's some speculation about who this elect lady may be. Many people believe it to be the church. Others would say it's some good Christian lady and her family. Regardless of the case, the message remains the same. You've got to love the truth to walk in it. That is, we have to love it for the right reasons. We've got to have true motives behind what we do. Why are we doing what we do? Jesus said uh, in Ephesians, or Paul said in Ephesians 4, verse number 15, that we are to buy the truth and sell it not. Our motives have to be based off of what's true and right and good. Not about self, not about glory of self or anything like that. We want to do what God wants us to do. There has to be a, a, a true standard in loving the truth. And that standard, of course, is the Word of God. Sanctify them by your truth. Your Word is truth. We've got to have true teaching to really walk in the truth and to love it. John 7, verse 17, Jesus said, We shall know concerning the doctrine, whether it is of God or whether He spoke on His own authority. And in Matthew chapter 17, verse 5, there was that confirmation from God Himself of the Lord Jesus Christ on the Mount of Transfiguration. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye Him. And so the true teaching of Christ is what we must follow, but all of that has to be based on true love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And so why do we walk in the truth? Why are we doing the things God wants us to? What's our motive in doing that? Well, friend, as we think about walking in the truth, it's essential that the Christian walk in this lifestyle because it's the truth that's going to abide forever. Look at 2 John verse 2 with me. Why walk in the truth? It's going to stand the test of time. Look in verse number 2. John says, Because of the truth which abides in us, and listen now, and will be forever. You think about things that are going to last. I can only think of three things that are really going to stand the test of time. God, of course, was there before time. He'll be there after time. Psalm 90 verses 1 and 2, From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. John 1 verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Christ, God, the Holy Spirit, they'll endure past time. What else is going to last forever? The Word of God. Matthew 24 verses 34 through 36, Jesus said, Heaven and earth will pass away. My word will never pass away. We're to receive the implanted word which lives and abides forever. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 25. And so God's going to last forever. His word's going to stand the test of time. And each of us have been given a soul that's going to spend eternity somewhere. Matthew 25, 46. The righteous shall go away into eternal life. The unrighteous into eternal condemnation. And so why is it that I want to walk in the truth and focus on the truth and let the, the truth be that which guides me? Because truth is going to stand forever. It's the only way my eternal soul can live with God for all eternity. And it is extremely important. But friend, not just that. We want you to know today, as John writes this letter, as he is encouraging these Christians to keep living like God wants them to live, he wants them to know there's a great joy in walking according to the truth. Look in verses 3 and 4 of 2 John. Grace, mercy, and peace, John says, will be with you from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. And notice this, I rejoice greatly that I found some of your children walking in truth as we receive commandment from the Father. What was John, what, where did he find joy and peace and happiness in knowing that these Christians were walking in the truth? For him, living the Christian life, walking in the truth, it going to bring so much joy into your life. Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. Happy is the man who walks not in the counsel of God, nor stands in the seat of the sinful, nor sits in the path of the scornful, but happy is the man whose delight is in the law of the Lord. Paul and Silas could even rejoice in prison in Philippi. Matthew 5, verse 6, Jesus said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. And so when we think about the, the joy of Christianity, that comes from walking in the truth. 
But consider this with me for just a moment. What exactly does it mean to walk in truth? Friend, walking in something means that's a lifestyle. It means it's a path that you're going down. It's a course that you're following. To walk in something means that you, you practice it. And we practice Christianity. We live it every day, right? Romans 12, verses 1 and 2, Paul said, I beg you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Paul said, I've been crucified with Christ. No longer I who live. Christ lives in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. If I'm walking in the truth, I'm practicing that every day. If I'm walking in the truth, I'm, I'm trying to exemplify. I'm trying to let that lifestyle shine forth in my life, right? Matthew 5, 16, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. I want people to see Christ in me. The hope of glory, Colossians chapter 1, verse 20 following. We want others to see Christ in us, Acts 4, verse 13, and we want to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. And so not only am I trying to, to practice that lifestyle, to live it, I'm trying to show it. Walking in truth means I'm showing that to others as well. It also means that sometimes to walk in truth, you have to defend it. Jude 3, Jude said we're to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. 1 Peter 3.15, we're to be ready always to give an answer for the reason of the hope that is within us. Walking in the truth means we're ready to defend and stand up for truth. But walking in the truth also means we're ready to spread that. We're ready to share. It's not something we hold on to, not something we put under a basket, not something that we sit on. It's something you share. Go into all the world. Preach the gospel unto every creature. Matthew 28, 18. The Son of Man came to seek and to save that which is lost. What's lost? All people outside of Jesus and thus, we want to try to seek and save them. We want to do good unto all men, especially those of the household of faith. Galatians chapter 6, verses 6 through 10. But as you think about the idea of walking in truth, part of that requires me to do my diligence in making sure what truth is. To walk in truth, you've got to recognize that there are false ways, there is error, and there are false teachers. Notice 2 John verses 7 and 8. John says this, For many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we do not lose the things we work for, but that we may receive a full reward. To walk in truth, you've got to be on the lookout. Watch out for false teachers. Romans 16, 17, Note those who teach doctrines contrary to what you've learned and mark them, Paul would say. John reminded us of this in 1 John, right? Test the spirits to see whether they are God for many false prophets have gone out into the world. There were things that people then needed to hear about. Asceticism, denial of the flesh, uh, uh, being harmful to the flesh was something that was popular then, and it really profited nothing. Uh, Colossians chapter 3 would say, uh, Colossians chapter 2, the end of it, uh, there was the idea of people who were saying that Jesus was an apparition, that He really didn't come in the flesh, that you thought we thought we saw Him, but it was some kind of... And John says, no, no, He came in the flesh. And if you deny that, you're not walking in the truth. Well, what about today? People who want to teach things that are not found in the Bible, the idea that the, the liberal spirit that is among us that's so, that is so prevalent in our day and age today that whatever you do, as long as you love God, whatever you do and however, however you live, whatever you teach is okay. Friend, is that really true? Jesus said, if you love me, what? Keep my commandments, John 14, 15. We've got to realize there's a spirit of error today. It may not be exactly like it was then, but there are people who want to put the books of men 
the ideas of men, the teaching of men before the Word of God. And it's just like Jesus said in Mark chapter 7 and Matthew chapter 15. These people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrine the commandments of men. And so John's message in 2 John reminds us part of walking in the truth is I've got to be on the look. I can't have blinders on. I've got to be looking out for people who might be teaching error and avoid that. And friend, that's the error that can be taught is a serious matter because John's going to teach us next that if you get caught up in that and you go beyond the teaching of Christ, God's no longer your father. Look at 2 John verses 9 through 11. Notice how serious this is. 2 John verses 9 through 11. Whoever transgresses, that's the idea of goes beyond, Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, do not receive him into your house, nor greet him, for he who greets him shares in his evil deeds. Friend, it's a serious matter to go beyond the teaching of Christ. If the Bible, here's what the Bible tells us. Jesus is the head of the church. Ephesians chapter 1, uh, verses 21 and 22. Jesus has all authority. Matthew 20, verses 28 following. We're going to be judged by the words of Jesus. John 12, verse 48. I am not to go beyond what's written. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 6. Revelation chapter 22, verses 18 and 19. What if somebody comes along and says, well... You know, this really, the Bible doesn't necessarily say this, but it might help us to be closer to God. It might help. Wait a minute now. Can it help if it's not found in the Bible? People try to slip things in. People try to change the way we worship by saying, well, the Bible doesn't say anything about using this in worship, but it just makes us feel so much better. Remember, we're not to go beyond the teaching of Christ. That means... If it's not found in the Bible, if you can't find a book, chapter, and verse, we ought not to do that. We can't run ahead of Christ. That's what the word transgress means, run ahead of. Whoever whoever gets out in front of Christ and tries to run ahead of Him, how serious is that? Friend, listen carefully to me. If we go beyond the teaching of Christ, you no longer have God as your Father. What's that mean? You've been separated from God. You're in a sinful, lost state. And if one dies in that, he'll be separated from God for all eternity. Now, what do we mean then by doctrine? Whoever transgresses and goes beyond the doctrine of Christ. Doctrine is just simply an older word for teaching. Whoever goes beyond the teaching of Christ doesn't even have God as his father. What are we talking about God's teaching? Can't go beyond what God teaches on the plan of salvation. You've got to hear God's Word. You've got to believe in Jesus. You've got to repent of your sins, be immersed in water, and rise out of that, walking in newness of life. Jesus made it so plain. He that believes and is baptized will be saved. If men add to that and say you've got to do all these other things, or if men take away from that and say, no, you don't have to, friend, that's beyond. That's something different than the teaching of Christ. On morality... We can't go beyond God's teaching as it relates to things like marriage and divorce. Jesus said the only reason for divorce is fornication. And then and only then does the uh, guilty party, does the innocent party have the right to remarry. Matthew 19, 9, if we say every divorce is okay, you remarry as many times, that's beyond the doctrine of Christ. As it relates to the church, Jesus taught there was one church. Ephesians 4, verse 4 Jesus promised to build His church, Matthew 16, verse 18. He's coming again to receive that kingdom to Himself, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 24. And we never anywhere read about the idea of denominationalism, naming after another man. That was condemned in the Bible, 1 Corinthians 1, verses 10 through 13. If we teach that's all right and well, we've gone beyond the doctrine of Christ. And so as Christians, we want to stay within the teaching of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And friend, part of what John taught us is not only can you not buy into that truth, you can't go along with those who do. 
You cannot accept false teachers and that be okay. John says, don't even bid them Godspeed. Don't even, don't even wish them well or invite them into your home. We've got to note them and we've got to mark them. Romans 16, verse 17, we've got to expose that which is error. Ephesians 5, verse 11, and we've got to contend earnestly for the faith. And so we can't rub elbows with and act like everything's okay when someone's teaching things that are not according to the doctrine of Christ. Now let's think for just a moment about what John says in 3 John. Walking in truth. John's going to teach us that walking in truth means that spiritual prosperity, internally, spiritual prosperity ought to be our main goal. One of my favorite verses in 1 and 2 and 3 John is found in 3 John 2. Look at this beautiful verse. John says this in 3 John verse number 2. As he writes to the beloved Gaius, he says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospered. What's the, what's the main area that Christians ought to be focused on? Was John concerned about uh, Gaius prospering in all things? Was he concerned about him being good in hell? Sure he was. But what was he mainly concerned with? Just as your soul prospers. The main emphasis for every Christian ought to be the spiritual prosperity of our soul, meaning that it's well with God that we're right with God and that we're trying to walk in the light and walk in truth as God wants us to. You see, the soul, we don't often think about it, but it's the most important possession you have. Not your car, not your home, not your bank account, not any treasures. Your soul is the most valuable thing you have. Listen to Jesus' words in Mark 8, 36 and 37. What will it profit a man he gains the whole world and loses his own soul. Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Nothing more important than your soul. Therefore, we've got to make sure that we're prospering spiritually. We've got to examine ourselves and test ourselves to see if we're in the faith. Don't let sin in. Don't let the devil get a foothold. Don't let these false teachers work into your life. Make sure above all else that your soul is ready to spend eternity with God. Now, one of the things that John is so encouraged by is those who are helping fellow workers in the gospel as they try to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Look at verses 5 through 8, and John calls out these workers. He says, Beloved, you do faithfully whatever you do for the brethren and for strangers who've borne witness of your love before the church. If you send them forward on their journey in a manner worthy of God, you do well, because they went forth for His name's sake, taking nothing from the Gentiles. We therefore ought to receive such that they may be fellow workers for the truth. You remember the journeys of Paul and, and Barnabas and Paul and Timothy? Then you remember the, Peter as he goes different places preaching the gospel. Who took care of them? when they came to a certain city? Who gave them money to eat on and, and to live on and to, to buy a motel room with or to, to, to help spread the gospel? Who helped them with that? Well, they were fellow workers. You do well when you bring them in, help them, you send them forth on their journey in a worthy manner, Paul said. You know, evangelism is a big deal. We all talk about that idea, spreading the gospel. That's what it's all about. But you know, when you help somebody, who's trying to spread the Word of God, you have a part in what they're doing. Your ability to help, to house, to fund, to, to, to send them forth in a good way, that helps evangelism just like uh, talking to your neighbor or friend might as well. And so Paul writes to these fellow workers and he encourages them. But there's something John wants them not to forget. Internally, inside the congregation here, John knows there's a man who's not helpful. John calls him out by name for what he's doing, and he warns the church to beware of this man. Are you familiar with Diotrephes? Diotrephes was definitely not walking in the truth. Look at 3 John 
verses 9 and 10. John says, I wrote to the church, but Diotrephes, who loves to have the preeminence among them, does not receive us. Therefore, if I come, I will call to mind his deeds, which he does, prating against us with malicious words, and not content with that, he himself does not receive the brethren, and forbids those who wish to, putting them out of the church. Diotrephes was a man who was not living right. He wanted to be the top dog. He wanted, the, he wanted first place. He wanted to sit in the chief seat. He wanted the preeminence. Now, here's the problem with that. Why couldn't Diotrephes have the preeminence? Somebody already has it in the church. Who is it? Colossians 1, 18, chapter 1, verse 18. That in all things, Jesus might have the preeminence. Jesus already has that spot. It's taken. No man can give himself first place, chief seat, more authority and power than anybody else because Jesus has all the preeminence. You see, Diotrephes is puffed up. That's not the way it ought to be. First Peter 5, 1 through 5, elders are not to be lords over people, but rather are to be like the chief shepherd Jesus with His humility. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs 16, verse 18. And of course, John knew that if Diotrephes was not dealt with, his actions would be contagious. And sadly, in some ways, they have been. Does it ring a bell in your mind, the idea of one man, one person, one human being wanting to have rule over everything in the religious world? Does that not ring a bell in our mind today with the seeds of the papacy? That was never God's plan. Never God's plan for one man to rule over everybody. Jesus is the head of the church. He has all authority and all power, and thus Christians are told. Verse number 11, don't imitate what's evil, imitate what's good. Diotrephes closes out 3 John on a positive note by reminding them to keep living the truth and keep walking in the light. And so, friend, what's the encouragement for us today? Walk in the truth. Live your life according to the teaching of Jesus. Don't let the world, don't let Satan, don't let false teachers and, and people who are all about themselves get in the way. Stay focused on Christ. Run the race with endurance. Don't let anything get in the way of you being faithful to God. Make sure your spiritual prosperity, that your soul's right with God, and that all is well with Him. Friend, if you're not a child of God, we encourage you to become one today. If you know what you need to obey the gospel, why not do that? If you'd like to study further about it, contact us. We'd be glad to help you. And friend, our hope and prayer at the gospel of Christ is that you'll look to the Word of God, that you'll let God's Word be your guide, and that everything we do will be motivated out of love. Join us next time as we study more from the Word of God. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, streaming, free media, and Internet. Our motto is truly to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call. 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.